Hi, my name is Mrs. E.G. and you might notice that I'm in a different location. I'm visiting my family in Belfast and um, my family and I were looking through old books um, that include lots of poems from children when they were in primary school or high school and I managed to get some of my poems into these books along with my younger brother, Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Woo! <laughs> He's actually right there. But uh, yeah, we'll just leave him there. He doesn't mm -hmm. want to appear yet. He might appear in a future video. Um, so the first one is a poem by myself. And I wrote this poem when I was 11. And it got into this book, which is called The Right Stuff, County Antrim Volume. Please comment below if you too have a, a poem in this book. That would be amazing. I might read it out if you let me know. Um, so this poem is called Dolphins. Dancing dolphins in the sea, over the water they swim with glee. Loving and thoughtful these creatures are, people come from near and afar, hoping to see them in the ocean blue. If I had a wish, I would swim with them too. Never will I change my thought, these animals are something hot. <laughs> so that's my first poem, that's that one done. Let's move on to the next one. Let's see, this book is called Pop, The Power of Poetry. Please comment below if you are in this book and I might read your poem if you're lucky. Um, this poem is actually not by me. It's by my younger brother, Jimmy. And, <laughs> and he wrote this poem when he was 12 and it's called Just a Lad. Everyone says, hurry up, you're running out of time. You'll have to act with urgency. You're already in year nine. The decisions you make now will affect all your later life. Only rich, successful people get a supermodel wife. If you want to own a nice big house and drive a flashy car, make sure each and every homework comes back with an A star. But I cannot see the point of it. It's sure to end in tears, to sacrifice my childhood and wish away the years. I promise to work hard at school and respect my mum and dad, but at holidays and weekends, I just like being a lad. <laughs> so that sums him up perfectly. And he still <laughs> follows the, the ideas of that poem <laughs> to this day. And he is no longer 12. <laughs> I will not reveal his age because that might reveal mine also. Um, so the next one is from this book, Poetry in Motion. Again, if you have a poem that you believe is in this book, please let me know, comment. This is a bit of a more serious poem. I was in a serious mood this year um, and I was 12 when I wrote this one and it's called Why War? Why did some men hate so much that they were prepared to die, to bring terror to America from a clear September sky? America was wounded and desperate for a plan their leader shouted loud and clear, we'll bomb Afghanistan. Their country's full of terrorists and men of cruel heart. Our B-52s will avenge us and blow them all apart. The war was over quickly, not content with this small gain. They bombed Iraq into the Stone Age and deposed Saddam Hussein. The civilians suffered most of all, a proud and noble race, to be crushed and occupied by invaders, the ultimate disgrace. A father buries his family under a scorching desert sky. Why do some men hate so much that they are prepared to die? Whew, so that one's a bit different than the other ones. Um, but I, I was quite proud of that poem at the time that I wrote it. Um, so moving on, there's only two poems left, sadly. This one is a book called Great Minds, which is clearly what my brother and I have. <laughs> um, for getting into all of these books, well done us. Um, and this one is by Jimmy and it's called My Summer Holiday. It's a bit more of a light-hearted one. I spent my summer holiday in a cottage in Donegal, halfway up a mountainside, far away from it all. No telephone or videos or no computer or Game Boy. We watched wild animals and birds and plants. That's how we got our joy. My daddy took us fishing to lots of different places. Cold mountain lakes and sunny beaches brought wonder to our faces. We kept a little tally of all the species that we caught. We rated them on scrumminess on a scale of 10 to naught. The brown trout was delicious. The sea trout simply fab. We all enjoyed the mackerel, the flounder and the dab. 
but the one that scored above the rest was garnered fried and batter. We ate so much that fortnight that we all came home much fatter. <laughs> Which is a true story. We did. Um, and he wrote that when he was 11. And I actually think that's a fantastic poem. Well done, Jimmy, for that one. Um, so, this poem <laughs> is one that my family make fun of me for to this day because of how impressive it is, nor not. It is one, two, three, four, it's five lines long. And I'll give you a bit of a backstory with this poem. I was in a rush, okay? I wrote it on my journey to school because I was irresponsible and hadn't done my homework that day. So it's called The Moon. Brace yourselves. The moon is a blob of white paint splotted on a brand new black shirt. The moon is a pale banana floating in the midnight sky. The moon is a big white cloud, the shape of a semicircle. <laughs> the moon is a silver screen, saber, on a black computer screen. The moon is a white plastic bag bobbing along the sky. And I wrote that when I was 10, <laughs> which is really embarrassing, but it's true. I'm sure you could write a better poem than that if you were half the age. So <laughs> what happens when you don't do your homework. You write embarrassing poems and then they get published in books. Um, and your family never lets you live them down. So as I said earlier, please comment if you think you feature in any of these books. Share it and see if any of your friends featured in these books. And I can embarrass them too. I don't have to be the only person that gets embarrassed. Um, thank you so much for watching my video. Please like the video, please share it, and please subscribe so that you don't miss my videos every Sunday. Bye for now. It's easy with Mrs. E.G. Even writing poems, even if they're not very good. <laughs> Bye.